Some analysts estimate Vermont needs to build 40,000 new homes this decade to balance the market. Champlain Housing Trust knows about the squeeze. They manage 2,500 apartment units. They're the largest nonprofit developer in the state. CEO Michael Monte tells us what they're facing, and he'll share the backstory of a mega donation that recently fell into their lap. How much new housing? How many units, new units of housing do you have in the pipeline? So that's a great question. Uh, we just have another 60 coming online between Braymore and also um, and, uh, out in uh, Colchester, uh, Stewart Avenue, that's coming online right now, like people are moving in right now. Another 100 or so that's sort of under development under construction right now, uh, actually probably plus 100, actually more like 150. And another 500 or so sort of in the pipeline, yeah. you know, things like City Place, the VFW, looking at some uh, property with Winooski, we got fully funded for, or mostly fully funded for something out in Shelburne uh, and Hinesburg. So we got a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities. And that's just the rental properties. We also have about 150 or so apartment uh, homes and home ownership that's also Yeah, so you have a mix. Of, you have a mix of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rentals and, and uh, condominiums. Yep. Yep. And, and uh, greater than we've ever had before. I mean, larger, the largest number, largest pipeline we've ever, we've ever had. And the second they're available, they're, they're spoken gone. for. They're spoken to. The, the level, the vacancy rate right now in Chittenden County is 0.4%, which means that when something becomes vacant, it gets filled. There's really not a vacancy. And that's true throughout the market, but also true with us. We have people waiting a year plus uh, for an available apartment. That's the tough part of the job, frankly. It's unhealthy, right? It's not, it's not good for us, necessarily. We'd love to be able to move people in quicker, and it's not good for people out in the community who are desperately in need of affordable housing. So it's housing. indicative of Vermont's housing crisis. Right now, right now, given um, interest rates, the cost of construction, the, the pandemic paradise of Vermont sort of showed itself to be at different times, the sort of the, the pressures on the market itself, have all created conditions which are just uh, unusual and different and a higher level of, of affordability needs than ever before. We hear the estimates, like the VHFA estimates, that uh, Vermont needs to build much more yeah. housing, yep. much faster than we have the last two or three decades. That's I mean, right. 30,000 units over right. the next few a years. A substantial number. On, on, at every level, both so, affordable housing level, middle income level, you know, at, wherever we can, in fact, the housing needs are great and that level of housing development that is needed is great. We've done the Better um, Building Homes Together campaign where we work mm -hmm. with private developers and have indicated that just in Chittenden County alone, we need at least 5,000 over the next few years. And you've finally gotten the attention of the folks at the state house. Yes, I think the the state has been really generous again with federal funds, but also with some state funds uh -huh. uh, in supporting the redevelopment of housing uh, and at a level that is unprecedented. A few, five years back, we argued that we needed a, a bond to build affordable housing. We got that. Uh, this has made this the amount of money has been quadrupled. That amount of money. Uh, the the, the for, unfortunate or fortunate thing really is that we need to keep it up. Uh, and it can't be, okay, we'll go back to the old days where we had $15,000 available, $15 million available for affordable housing throughout the state. We're going to have to keep the, that, that, that level of support up in the state of Vermont for a few more years. So are we making progress or do you think in a, in a year or two? I mean, we're yeah. in front of one of your projects now yeah. rehabbing um, old dilapidated housing yeah. in the new one and two bedroom apartments. Yep. This will be uh, online in another year or two. Yep. Is I, it making a dent? I, well, I think, I think it is. I think it makes progress. I mean, first of all, we can't, uh, we, in, this, in this work, we can't despair. We have to feel good about what we can do. Uh, we are not always gonna be able to do it all. Uh, private sector folks have, an, have a role to create market rate housing. Uh, other nonprofits throughout the state of Vermont and uh, others also need to be able to do that. It's not just up to us, but we feel like with the, uh, the level of opportunity we have in front of us, the pipeline that we have in front of us, the support that we have been getting in the state um, enables us, I think, to make a big dent. Drive around Chittenden County and you can't miss all the construction. The Housing Trust, for example, now transforming former military barracks in Colchester into 63 new apartments, ready in another year or so. Downtown, the long-awaited City Place project, the largest in Vermont, now rising fast, promising hundreds of new homes. What kind of difference do you think City Place will make? 
Well, again, um, in that pro context, 85 affordable housing units in downtown Burlington. Um, with the VFW, which is uh, going to be on South Windows, get another 38. Uh, with the potential Cambrian rise for home ownership, another 30, maybe 70. Uh, with Shelburne Road, another 80 or so. Down in Shelburne Road, Hinesburg, another 100. So these things begin to add up. And at some point, it has an impact. We have seen in the past when large levels of development happen at the affordable housing level, how it does have an impact. Uh, but you know, it's an unprecedented level of growth, unprecedented level of need uh, at the same time, and really we just need to keep it up. What more could Montpelier do? Um, you know, it'll is it just a money thing, or uh, is there well, money, regulatory reform, or what? Regulatory reform has been critical, and there's still some more that can be done there, but I think... Like uh, what, I, what specifically? Well, I think some of the things that uh, the, the mayor has suggested around uh, downtowns being able to sort of move past Act 250 because they have really all the regulatory sort of requirements that Act 250 has, I think that would be a valuable thing. There have been certainly some changes in that, but some more, for, more in that direction. Uh, add some value, I think, to the private sector especially, to be able to move their projects, uh, their projects forward. I think there's some stuff that has to happen in terms of protection of tenants. Uh, I think that right now the con uh, there are many tenants who are facing conditions where rents are going up from $400 to $1,200, and that's cheap, right? That's in, that's in the outskirts of the city. If you go downtown Burlington and other places, rents are just jacked up really high. So I think there's some things that need to be done. Uh, you know, we've, uh, the state has done an incredible job of supporting mobile home uh, owners, uh, residents, in terms of uh, the sale of their property, uh, first option to purchase. Those kinds of ideas need to be discussed. I think it's, there's some stuff on a, at an ordinance level, sort of stuff at a, at a protection level. Mm -hmm. you know, we need more of that. No, I think that's a critical sort of thinking that the state uh, legislators need to do. It's hard. It'll be tougher but to do, but I think that that's important to consider. We spoke with the Commissioner of Housing who said, you know, a, a lot of folks um, in positions of decision-making in Montpelier look backward and not forward. Mm -hmm. uh, they think about Vermont in the 70s when our issues were different yeah. than they are in, in the 2020s. Yeah, yeah. You agree? Uh, I would never say uh, speak ill of any legislator, <laughs> and I would I would say that I think many of them are working hard to look at what the solutions might be. Uh, we're facing things that we never faced before. You know, there's a fentanyl crisis in the community, and that's impacting the, the sort of services and needs for folks who are some portion of those folks who are homeless. These are things that are forward. These never happened. This is not looking in the past. This is current. Uh, any legislature who we've spoken to is looking for solutions and looking for ways to use the state resources in a way that are smarter and better. So I would, I would, I would disagree a bit. You got a nice phone call yeah. recently yeah. Uh, that led to the largest single gift yeah. you've ever received yeah. from the philanthropist uh, who used to be married to the founder of yeah. Amazon. Yeah, all those, all those boxes paid off. Mackenzie yeah. Scott. <laughs> yeah. $20 million. Yeah, substantial. What will you do with it, and uh, did, there, did it come with strings attached? Um, remarkably enough, um, you know, we, we got a call from this group in, in, from San Francisco in February, which was sort of vetting us and asking us questions we didn't know what for. And then we got another call in July that said, here's the money. And it was a 15-minute phone call, and it really was two things. One, uh, this is your last gift. Uh, and there's no strings attached. Uh, and that's it. Uh, what's your bank account number? And please keep it secret until a certain moment in time. Uh, so we were very happy with it. We don't, uh, uh, Mackenzie Scott in that way has changed philanthropy dramatically. So philanthropy typically is we'll give you this if you do that. We'll give you this if you have to do this and report this way, that way. This is not how she's doing it. What she's doing, and right, right now she, uh, this, she's doing a lot of affordable housing uh, uh, nonprofits around the country. Mm -hmm. She puts the money forward and says, go. Uh, I like what you've done. We vetted you enough. You've done good work. Continue to do good work. So um, that's been what the strings are, is that we have to do well with the, with the, with the resources that we're receiving. What would you think when you hung up the phone? I, I, I weeped a little. It's, yeah. it's, it's a great gift. Yeah which you can do a lot with. Yeah, yeah, it was, um, 
I thanked the person because I said, first of all, you got a great job. <laughs> 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 Calling people up and saying, here's, you know, uh, I'm old enough to remember this TV show called um, The Millionaire. A guy named Michael Anthony would go around and give poor people a million dollars, right? And that was transformative for them. Yeah. Same for us. <laughs>